I've got a really interesting problem today involving a recursively defined sequence and a limit. So let's look at what we've got. So let's set a sub one equal to two, a sub two equal to the square root of three, and then we'll define a n plus one by this recursion. So we have a n equals a n plus one times three minus a n plus one squared. And well, let's include one more thing here and let's force a n to be between zero and one. And we'll see why we need to put that range there. And then our goal is to find the value of the limit as n goes to infinity of three to the n times a n. Okay. So let's maybe first start by calculating a sub three. And let's observe that a sub three will satisfy the following equation. So we'll have the square root of three equals a sub three times three minus a sub three squared. So that's just plugging the appropriate value of n up here and using the fact that a sub two is the square root of three. So let's go over here on the y-axis to the square root of three, so that'll be right around there, and observe that a sub three will be solutions to this equation, uh, 3x minus x cubed equals square root of three. But observe that there are two solutions. There's one right here, and then there's one right here, and that's by this plot that I've built for the graph y equals 3x minus x cubed. But then, by this condition that we added on, we're gonna take the one between zero and one. And there's only one between zero and one, and it's gonna be right about here. And while this is a cubic polynomial equation, which we can find an exact solution for, but we won't really worry about that so much. We will say, though, that this is approximately equal to 0.68. So with my scale, it looks a little bit less than that, but I think my scale just isn't perfect. Okay, so now we've got a sub three. And then from there, we'll transpose this a sub three up here, and then that will give us another two points on this curve. And of course, we're gonna take the one that is smaller, and that's gonna be between zero and one. So that's gonna give us our a sub four. And then likewise, we're going to transport this a sub 4 up here, find solutions, that'll give us our a sub 5, and so on and so forth. And because between 0 and 1, this function is increasing, that's going to build this decreasing sequence um, of these a sub n numbers. So let's maybe note that here. So notice we'll have a sub three will be bigger than a sub four, will be bigger than a sub five, and so on and so forth. So in particular, we've got the following condition. Notice that a sub n is inside of the interval from zero to two for all values of n, because here it's equal to two, and then a sub n is on the interval from zero to one for all n bigger than or equal to three by this observation that we've made over here with the plot. Okay, but observe that if a number is between zero and two, we can write it as the output of twice a trig function. So that's exactly what we wanna do now. Okay, so let's set a sub n equal to two times the sine of alpha sub n. So we're kind of defining a new sequence alpha n by this condition. Okay, and now what I'd like to do is see what our original recursion will say about this sequence alpha sub n. So let's rewrite this original recursion using our a sub n equals two sine alpha n. So let's see, we'll have two sine alpha n equals so it's gonna be two times sine alpha n plus one, and then times three minus four sine alpha n plus one quantity squared. So again, that's just plugging 
our sine version of our a sub n sequence into our recursion. So check it out. We can cancel these twos from both sides. Oh, that's not the two. That's the three. So we'll cancel the twos from both sides. And then that's going to give us the following. So we'll have sine of alpha n is equal to sine of alpha of n plus 1 times 3, multiplying this through, minus 4 sine cubed of alpha n plus 1. OK, good. But now that right hand side, it may or may not look familiar, but that's in fact a triple angle um, identity or part of the triple angle identity for the sine function. This actually simplifies to the sine of 3 alpha n plus 1. So check it out. We have sine of alpha n equals sine of 3 alpha n plus 1. Now that doesn't mean that those arguments are equal because we know the sine function is not one to one, but it is periodic. So that tells us that 3 times alpha n plus 1 is equal to alpha n plus 2 times m times pi, because again, sine is 2 pi periodic, or we have 3 alpha n plus 1 is equal to negative alpha n plus m times pi, where m is odd. Okay, but can we push these two ideas together? And in fact, we can, and it would be like this. So we have 3 alpha n plus 1 is equal to minus 1 to the k times alpha n plus k times pi. So we've got something going on like that. But now we can go over here to our restrictions on a sub n and observe that a sub n being between 0 and 2 for all n. So that tells us that alpha 1 and alpha 2 can be chosen from 0 to pi over 2. And then alpha 3 can be chosen from 0 to pi over 6. And that's, again, to achieve these values of a sub n when we're putting them into the sine function. But then if alpha 3 is chosen between 0 and pi over 6, but then combining together these restrictions on our alphas together with this rule comparing our alpha n plus 1 with our alpha n, we in fact see that we can't have this minus 1 to the k part or the plus k pi part because we'd be outside of the intervals that we need to be inside of. Okay, so well, what that tells us is that in fact we have 3 alpha n plus 1 equal to alpha n for all n bigger than or equal to 2. Okay, so let's see how this can be used to finish this problem off pretty quickly. So after motivating our ability to set a sub n equal to 2 sine alpha n, we built this nice recursion on these alpha n's. We showed that alpha n plus 1 had to be equal to alpha n over 3 for all n bigger than or equal to 2. But now observe that we can keep applying this recursion right here. And what we'll see is in the end, alpha n will be equal to alpha sub 2 over, let's see, it's going to be 3 to the n minus 1. And now we're ready to do our final limit. So notice that the limit as n goes to infinity of 3 to the n times a sub n can be written as, well, I'm going to take a 3 out, and then we'll have the limit as n goes to infinity of, so it's going to be 3 to the n minus 1 times 2 times sine of alpha sub 2 over 3 to the n minus 1. But now this is actually a well-known limit and we can see that if we set, for instance, theta alpha sub 2 over 3 to the n minus 1, which is equivalent to saying that 3 to the n minus 1 is, let's see, alpha 2 over theta. But then after factoring some stuff out, this turns into 6 times alpha 2 and then we'll have the limit as theta goes to zero from above after our change of variables. That's where theta is approaching. And then we have the sine of theta over theta. But that limit, like I said before, is well known. It's equal to one. So in the end, we have six times alpha two. 
But let's calculate alpha two using this rule right here. So what do we have? We have a sub two, which is the square root of three over two, dividing this two over is the sine of alpha two. But then which value of alpha two will give us sine alpha two equals root three over two? Well, that is pi over three. So that means we have alpha two is equal to pi thirds. So in the end, we have two times pi thirds or two pi as the value of our limit.